G'day, Michael from Ironbark Game Studios, and welcome to the second part of this Blender Beginner series where I'll take you through the shortcuts for transforming objects. Using shortcuts to activate either the Move, Rotate, or Scale tool is a quick method to start transforming currently selected objects. So if press G and move the mouse, that's going to translate a selected object. So think of G for grab. We can then left click to confirm a movement or right click to cancel the movement. So I'm going to right click, and that will set it back to where it was. We can then press R and move the mouse, and that will rotate the currently selected object. And then right click to cancel that. You can also tap double R, and that will enter this trackball mode here. Right click cancel. We can then press S and move the mouse to scale the object. And I'll right click to cancel that as well. So we can combine G, R and S, with X, Y, and Z to limit the movement rotational scale. So if I hit G for grab and then hit X, that's just gonna move my object along the X axis. If I then hit Y, that will move along the Y axis and Z for the Z axis. Same thing if I'm rotating it, if I hit X, Y, or Z, that's gonna limit the rotation. And same for the scale. X, Y, and Z. I'll hit G again to grab the object, and then I'll hit Shift and X, and that's going to exclude movement from the X axis. If I hit Shift and Y, that will exclude movement from the Y axis, and Shift and Z exclude the Z axis. While transforming an object, you can also just type in a number value. So if I hit G for grab, X for the X axis, and then I type in three, that's gonna move my cube three units along the X axis. If I hit G, Y, and then negative three, that will move at negative three units along the Y axis. Another example, if I hit R and then X to rotate along the X axis, and then type in 45, that's gonna rotate at 45 degrees around the X axis. Then for example, if I hit S for scale, and I type in two, that's going to double the size. Or if I hit S to scale, and I go 0 0.5, that's going to half the size. Typically, the keyboard shortcuts will prove more efficient when transforming an object. But there is also an option to activate the more classic transform gizmo, which is common in programs like Unity. So if we look up the top right hand corner here and drop down to viewport gizmos, we can turn on the move, rotate and scale gizmos. So these you can just grab and move, scale or rotate. And I'll hit Ctrl Z to undo those. And I'll also turn them off up here again. You can also see in the toolbar on the left hand side, we have the move, rotate and scale gizmos as well. So a bit of a shortcut to get to these, if you press shift and space, it'll bring up this little menu. So the move, rotate and scale gizmos also gives you the shortcuts here, G, R and S. And you can just toggle between those as well. Typically I won't use these at all though. I'll just use G, R and S as my shortcuts. So once you've transformed an object, you'll be able to see its new position rotation scale in the properties panel. So I'm just going to move this object by three units along the X axis and confirm that with left click. And then I'm going to press N to toggle on the properties bar. And we can see under the transform, we have here X as three, currently meters. Our scene units are one unit equals one meter and the Y and Z are on zero, zero. So if I press G, and move it along the Z axis. You can see the Z axis is changing here. Left click to confirm, we can see it's changed there. Same with the rotation and also the scale. So if we want to clear the location of an object, you can press Alt and G, and we see the location is set to 0, 0, 0. If we press Alt R, that's going to clear the rotation, set that back to zero, zero, and zero. And then Alt S, 
is going to clear the scale and set it back to 1, 1, and 1. I'm going to move this object somewhere else in the scene now, rotate and scale it a little bit, and say we wanted to apply these values, so we're happy with the current location, rotation, and scale of an object, you can press Control A, and that's going to bring up this apply menu. Then if we hit location, that's going to set the location to 0, 0, 0, but it's not going to set the object back to the center of the scene. Press Control A, set the rotation, it's going to set it to 0, 0, and 0, but it's not going to reset the rotation. And Control A, and then scale back to 1, 1, and 1. So now if I move this object, scaled it, rotated it, we get these values up here. And if I reset them with Alt, S, R, and A, sorry, Alt, S, R, and G, that's going to set it back to the position, rotation, and scale that we set before. Of course, you'll want to know how to undo and redo. So if we hit Control Z, that is our undo button. So I'm just going to undo all the movements that we made, set it back to the middle of the scene. Um, if we want to redo something, we press Shift Control Z to redo. So Control Z to undo, Shift Control Z to redo. There is something else we can look at with the undo button. So if we go to the Edit and Preferences, and we take a look in the system and the memory and limits. We have a number of undo steps here. So we can actually increase the number of undo steps that we actually get. So one final thing to talk about is the axis orientation. So I'm just gonna turn on the move tool so we can actually see um, our gizmo up here. And I'm gonna open up the transform orientations menu with comma on the keyboard. And currently the orientation is set to global. So the gizmo of our object, the X axis is lined up with the global X axis. The Y is lined up with the global Y axis there. We can set this to different orientations. So if we go to local and I rotate my object along the X axis, we can see that the gizmo for the Z is now facing this way. If I grab that Z axis, I'm going to move it along the local Z, not the global Z. So G, Z, that's going to move it along the local axis there. Press comma and set it back to global, and we can now see the Z axis is facing up. So you'll most likely be switching between global and local, but you don't actually need to switch to local in this menu here. So if you press G, and say you want to move it on the local Z, tap Z once, tap Z again, and now it's moving along the local axis. So double tap whatever axis you want to move it locally. One final method of moving an object is using snapping. So there are a number of different options in this tool, but we're just going to look at grid snapping for now. So if we go up to the top middle of the viewport editor with snapping here, we have this little magnet. We can turn the magnet on. It's going to turn on snapping and currently the snapping method is set to increment we could set this to a number of different options in here but we'll just leave it on increment that's going to snap it to the grid so now if i press g and move the mouse that's going to snap it to the grid you can still use the x y and z but it's just going to snap it in smaller increments you don't have to have this little magnet turned on. We can turn this off, and whilst we're moving an object, so G, we can hold down Control, and Control is going to toggle on snapping whilst we're moving an object. So you don't need to come back here and click on the magnet every time you want to snap. Just hold down Control whilst you're transforming an object. One final tip for snapping. So I'm just going to press G and hold down Control to start snapping. I'm also going to hold down shift and that's going to snap it in smaller increments. So instead of snapping it by one meter or one unit increments, I'm going to snap it in 10 centimeter increments or 0.1. Thanks for watching the video. Give us a like and subscribe if you found it useful and leave a comment if you have a question or your own blended tip. 
You can download a free set of PDF notes for this series from the Patreon link in the description, and I'll see you in the next one.